Hey guys, Happy Kappa here, and uh, we're back today. Uh, I thought I'd talk a bit about ground effect and a bit about translational lift, right? So I'll uh, let's talk about ground effect first. Um, so so ground effect. I'll put a, a, a picture up on the screen here for you, and that'll demonstrate it quite nicely. You see, if you're hovering um, near the ground, air is going to be pushed down and it's going to be pushed off the ground, right? By it being pushed off the ground, it's going to be pushed to the sides away from the center of the helicopter. That means that the kind of vertexes that get created at your rotor tips as the rotors uh, spin, those vertexes are going to be smaller when you're hovering in ground, right? Because they get pushed away by the air. So um, that's, that's kind of uh, quite useful to know, and we can demonstrate it quite easily by seeing if we're hovering above this taxiway, right? We're pulling, you see how much power we're pulling on our manifold pressure gauge pulling uh, in between 20 and 25 inches of manifold pressure. All right, so if we then uh, quickly gain a bit of altitude, pulling a bit more manifold pressure, gain a bit of altitude, and we then uh, start descending, right? We're pulling the same amount of power as we were in ground effect, and we're descending. Now see what happens when we get in ground effect. Get down into ground effect, and we get hit by a cushion, right? I did not touch the collective at all at that point. The collective was the same, I had my hands off it, and, uh, and we got hit by this cushion that just let the helicopter kind of settle a bit above the ground and, um, and just let us, let us hover here with, the, with this power. Now, uh, this is quite useful if you're operating in uh, where you have high gross weight um, or where you have um, your high altitudes and you don't have as much air to work with uh, and you have limited power. Um, but I'll demonstrate a bit about that when we learn about translational lift. Uh, so translational lift is kind of the act of where your helicopter, when you transition from being in a hover to being in forward flight, you're going to have more lift created by being in forward flight. Right? Uh, your rotor blades start working more like a wing and less like uh, you know, just air being pushed down. And this this kind of um, this just makes you makes you get that extra bit of lift that can uh, that can really help you out. So um, let's let's quickly uh, do a scenario here where we kind of uh, utilize translational lift. Um, if we're if we if we're flying in a helicopter and we're very heavy, right? It's we might be completely fueled up, have you know all the fuel tanks filled, and we've got a lot of cargo on board and. Uh, and, and we really need to fly. Maybe the uh, density altitude is, is uh, quite high as well. Um, so we, we're on the ground, and we try to, to kind of get into a hover, but we're pulling just enough power to where we can't. We can't get in a hover. You can see, pulling about 20 inches of manifold pressure, and we're not hovering. We can't get into a hover. Our skids are on the ground, right? But if we then lean forward, right, just slightly, just to start, get some speed starting to get a little bit of speed and we're flying right that's magic that's uh, that's translational lift the more speed we get here we get fully into translational lift you can see we're flying forward we've got 40 knots of airspeed now and we can start ascending we can start climbing up and we can climb up above trees and uh, this is a um a, a, a kind of practice commonly used by helicopter pilots um it's it's exactly uh, often used when you're flying with a lot of cargo or you know your fuel tanks are, are quite full and and you're heavy. You can do this running takeoff where you slide your skids along the ground and you therefore gain translational lift, making you uh, making you take off. It's really quite smart and uh, really effective. So uh, and if we if we just talk a bit about uh, ground effect compared with translational lift, we can. Um, we can kind of combine them just like we did then, but we can we can have a situation where uh, we've got enough power to hover down by the runway, and we've got enough power to hover in ground effect, right? But we don't have any more power. This is uh, this is all the power we have available to us today. Um, we're quite heavy, so so we've got this this power, and we're in this hover, and again, all we can do is we can slightly lean the nose forward, just slightly, just enough that we start getting a bit of speed. And you can see by getting the speed, we're already gaining a bit of altitude, right? 
getting speed, gaining altitude, up to 20 knots and reclimbing, re right? This is this is really quite smart and it's, um, it's something you can really utilize. Now, you have to be careful with this because when coming back down, you don't want to get into a hover out of ground effect, right? Because if you do that, you don't have enough power to stay there. Uh, and if you don't have enough power to stay there, you'll start falling out the sky and uh, you'll most likely hit the ground quite hard because you won't have enough power to cushion your landing. So what you need to do if, you, um, if you're kind of low on power is um, get down and get into ground effect. And if you know you have enough power to get into a hover, you can just kind of slow down into a hover and it's not so big of a deal, right? But if you know that you don't have enough power to get into a hover, you can do a running landing. Now this isn't very very complicated and, and you don't want to do it at a very high speed. But this is this, this can be used as well um, quite effectively. You know, don't have that much power available to us so we just slowly bring the helicopter down. And now it's a very slow running landing. If you have even less power um, for you, you can land at maybe 20 knots forward air speed. Um, and, uh, and at that point you can uh, you can bring the helicopter down on the ground uh, safely. Now, these practices uh, I would very much recommend only doing on tarmac or on asphalt or concrete. Because um, if you do it on grass, you have uh, a bigger chance of, of uh, getting your skids stuck into the ground. And if that happens, you might get a, a rollover. So you might roll your helicopter. That's obviously not very good. So if you have the tarmac, if you have the runway, uh, you can really utilize it quite well uh, by understanding these principles and uh, and uh, and really using them in these uh, kind of extreme situations. It's not something you want to do a lot, and in emergencies, as I said, it, it can be uh, uh, not that great because um, if you're quite heavy, that's not going to be good if you lose an engine. Um, but you can get into the air and you can do different flights um, while being really heavy and and as you fly, you burn fuel, you'll get lighter. Uh, but but if you're up in, in the mountains and you're in a mountain airport that's really high up, you can, you know, even if if it's looking bad, if you're really heavy, you can still take off. And uh, as long as it's safe where you're going to land, as long as, you know, you've got the, um, uh, the kind of power where you're going, um, it's, it's fine. Because as soon as you have that translational lift, you're going to be able to fly... Um, more or less like you would if you were using full power. Alright, so I hope that video uh, helped you guys out explaining a bit. And uh, if it did, please let me know. Always awesome to see your feedback. If you like the video, leave a like. And uh, until the next video, guys, take care.